What's all that noise, eh? Well, it's a speedboat going past on this reservoir. This is the Chase Water Reservoir. And it holds about 4.4 billion litres of water, so there's quite a lot of it in there. My boat, I don't know how much of this you're going to see because of the internet speed. It's terrible. <laughs> it's really bad. My boat's just down there. And uh, this is a bit of a hangout spot for kids and that, so uh, I'm going to, yeah, find a quieter mooring somewhere else. But yeah, we're on the Birmingham Canal navigation. That's the reservoir that I'll be reversing away from. Right, guys. Yeah. They're going to have a good time. Yeah, it is a bit of a, um, it's a bit out of the way here, a bit remote. So the signal is going to be shocking. I'm debating how long I should actually be talking for, but because you probably won't. And when it plays back, it will just kind of judder around, but we'll give it a go. Right, so down to my boat. That's the reservoir, leaving that behind. And I'm just going to get to it, untie the boat and start to reverse it. We'll see if we can get a better signal. Back out onto the Whirly and Essington Canal. And if you put your comments up, I'll be able to see. I'm just going to turn the camera around. <laughs> I know this is going to be cool. Signal is awful. Right, that's about there. I'm just going to leave you there. Untie the first rope, which is at the front. And if you can hear me, I'm not actually going to talk much at the moment because I'm worried about the signal. You're not going to be able to hear much if you can't hear me, if you see what I mean. It's a Friday night, everyone's here to party. <laughs> but I've just had a very, very long week. So I'm going to get moving. No idea if you can hear me or not. All right, let's crank it.
please do say hello if you are watching this so I can see that this is actually going out to someone. There we go, Gary and Leanne, hello, welcome to the live stream. And congratulations to the first person who liked this stream, good on you. Um, it's a little bit experimental, we don't actually know how much it's getting through to you. <laughs> Your signal is very, very bad, and I'll stop banging on about it in a minute, but I just have no idea what is getting through and what isn't. Right, here we go. Just turning the boat around. At the end of the Anglesey branch of the Curly Whirly, or the es Whirly and Essington Canal, as it's more formally known. All right, here we go. Let's crank it. So there's quite a lot of weed on this canal. <laughs> Evening, Kevin. Welcome to the live stream. And welcome everyone. Hopefully, this is coming through loud and clear. Yet another experimental live stream from the depths of the canal system. From me to you. <laughs> well, it's just nice to have your, your company. That behind me, can't see it anymore, but that's the reservoir at the top there. And then um, leaving that well behind because it's starting to turn into a bit of a hot spot for uh, everyone having parties. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm exhausted. I've just been doing loads of, loads, loads of work this week. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to go and find a more quiet and peaceful, and also in the morning with shade. So I need more shady, I need a shady location, of course. Hello, hello everyone coming through there. Helen, Ant and Hanya and John Townsend, thank you. Welcome all to this live stream, another experimental one. We're right at the most northern point of the Birmingham Canal navigations on the Worley and Essington Canal. So this is the furthest north you can get in the sort of Birmingham area. Uh, Chase Water Reservoir, that was the one that I am reversing or now turning a boat around and just driving away from. Someone asked me earlier on, is it driving a boat or sailing? I said, it's, dri it's driving a boat. Yeah, there's no sails involved here. Just marketing. 
lol. So yes, expect another live stream of humorous quips uh, from me or from passers-by. It is a Friday night, do remember that. Uh, but we're not going into town, we're just going to moor up somewhere in... Well, with a, hopefully a nice view of some fields and the M6. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's just the part of the country we're in. A dirty great motorway um, placed across this canal in a bit. And also, there's a canal coming off this one that's been restored that I'm a patron of, and it's called the Litchfield and Hatherton. John Townsend has just commented, you could have waited until my wife was home, Robbie. She likes it when you're live. Well, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for everyone, can I, John? <laughs> this is a bit of a random live stream that I've just decided to do anyway. I only just stopped working today on something else. So I could have had a nice evening just relaxing, but I thought, no, I need, I need to get back on YouTube. I'm missing it. So, yeah, this live stream is my way back in on that front. Just hope you're all doing well, keeping cool. Probably all sitting outside having a barbecue or something nice. Or maybe you're cranking it yourself. I don't know. I don't know what you're up to. Probably for the best, isn't it, really? This bit on the left is an overflow, so it's not moorings or anything, it's just uh, if the water gets to a certain level, it goes over to the side. I'm going to show you this on this. I don't really know what this is, but it's sort of a gully that seems to come from uphill, so I'm, I assume this is part of where the reservoir is, a little pond is there. I, I don't know, but it, yeah, it, you've got some canal architecture there, some uh, canal archaeology to look at, and try and ponder and work out what it used to be. And that's how I spend my Friday evenings. Very soon I'll have to go down the weed hatch and, uh, yeah, untangle some weed off the propeller. But I'll wait, I'll wait until uh, I'm starting to lose either power on the steering or, yeah, just slowing right down. I might even wait to a bit where there's not so much weed as well. It's a big problem in summer. Well done to the 20 people that are watching it right now, this video, to, um, for finding the link. I had a bit of a trouble, problem. It's just dropped down to 19. Brilliant. <laughs> I had a bit of a problem uh, starting it up. It, it began in portrait mode, so I had to delete it and then start all over again. Afternoon, Donal. Um, thanks for so much for tuning in. Yes, you're right, I did a programme about the Rochdale Canal. And that was a beast. Wide locks, about 91 of them, I think. Yeah, 91 locks. All wide ones, in a space of about 30, 35 miles. <laughs> Get to see some cool stuff along the way though. All right, my voice is going a little bit, so I'm going to go and get a drink. And then I'm going to go down the weed hatch. Welcome, Karen, Stefo. Welcome to the, to the video. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, giving shout outs to people, 
it's um, and if you're watching this back just click on view chat I don't know how where, where, what part of the screen it is but click on view chat and you'll have to see who I'm referring to oh, there you are here's one I poured earlier pure vodka and gin and martini yeah Sorry, the um, well, not well. I am sorry. But it's not my fault. Internet keeps cut, cutting out. Signal is obviously not that great. You never can tell we're doing live stream moving along. It's yeah, it's difficult. I've got something interesting coming up that I have no idea about. It looks, I think I know what it is, but I've not been able to unearth any proof. So it'll be interesting to see what your take is. It's on the left hand side coming up in a minute. Hello Graham Jones, welcome. He's on the other side of the BCN. This is the north, most northern point of the Birmingham Canal Navigations. Of which there, as you might have already known, is about 100 miles off. Right, on the, on the left here we've got two, I don't know, apparatus, whatever they're called. Uh, they look like chutes where you, you load a canal boat up, so maybe they haven't been used in a long, long time. They're just overgrown. Everything around it's over, been grown around it. Um, but look, it's, it's a bit mangled as well. And I wonder if it's probably just something that's been vandalised. It's really hard to tell. But I think that is something to do with boats. It's got to be. Look at it. That's got to be a chute of some kind to load up coal. Yeah, I can't play my own soundtrack, so please do play any kind of music you want in the background. <laughs> Probably better than listening to me prattle on. No, you're going to be missing out on all the juicy gossip. Yeah. As we go underneath the M6. The M6 toll. Which is the bit I always avoid if I'm driving. Quite a lot of kids out on their bikes. It's good to see them out and about, really, isn't it? Instead of playing on the computer video games, which is me when I have a spare at the moment, <laughs> playing one at the moment called No Man's Sky, I'm addicted to it, completely addicted, right, going under the bridge, probably going to cut out now, so I'll see you on the other side, might speed up a little bit.
Bye! <laughs> Just a kid waving. Right, slow down. Stop cranking it for a moment. Signal must be getting better. Must be. Here we go. We're going to go under a bridge called Burntwood Road Bridge. If you look on a map of, sort of the Birmingham area, right in the centre of England, um, you'll see um, you will see a town called Walsall. So we're not far from Walsall and Cannock as well in Staffordshire. So we're not we're quite close to Cannock as well. Uh, come underneath the M6, where the M6 toll is, and this lovely canal bridge. And now we're going to go through past a few people's gardens. Might have a nose at that. So there's a turning point here, a uh, winding hole. Winding hole, sorry. It's winding, not winding. Presumably because that's what the old boatmen and women used to look, use to turn their boats because they wouldn't have had engines. Just go whichever way the wind's going to push you. Which is a great tip even to me when I'm, I've got an engine. That's right, I bet you didn't know this channel was educational. <laughs> Sheds on the right there. A bit just there. <laughs> I'm very tired, um, but I've moved away from the previous morning I was at, right by a reservoir, because everyone was just turning up with uh, what I would, if, if you're old fashioned, not un fashioned, um, turning up with ghetto blasters, ready to pump it up, pump up the volume, and have a good time. So I just want to <laughs> find somewhere quiet so I can have a day off. So I'm not currently planning a live stream for tomorrow. Just thought it'd be nice to have a, an evening one. What I do want to find is a mooring with some shade. That would be good. So it's going to be about 30 degrees Celsius tomorrow. It's going to be hot. And I'm going to have to wear an even skimpier vest. And I don't think you can cope with that. Too hot for TV. Let's uh, have a look where we're going. A remote canal, this one. No other boats. I've, I've, I haven't seen any other boats for the last two days. Pretty good if you want to get away from it all. But not so great if you want to watch Netflix. <laughs> because of the signal. Of uh, 
streaming services are available. This is pretty cool, check this out. A little glamping pod thing. It's like a, it's where a hobbit might live. I love how creative people get with their gardens uh, right next to the canal. And it's often only for the benefit of people walking or boating past. Oh crap, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crash. Just evasive maneuvers. I can see this this live, if you watch it back, it's gonna be quite soporific. It's gonna help you get to sleep. <laughs> Mainly because I'm so knackered. <laughs> I just don't have the energy. It's like that on hot days though, isn't it, anyway? Just chill, man. <sighs> just relax. I could turn this into some sort of um, hypnotherapy. <laughs> I've just have to speak some affirmations. And you're starting to relax from your head to your toes. Starting from now. <laughs> that would just be creepy. <laughs> I just couldn't be able to take myself seriously. Please uh, send me a little message to let you, me know that you're actually receiving all this guff that I'm spouting. Yes, you are. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> I think I must have sent you all to sleep. And I wasn't getting any comments, so I was like, oh dear. <laughs> but right now I've got 20 people watching. It's a bit of a secret live stream that only a few of us know about. Tim Hill, he's asking me, how has the filming been going? Well, Tim, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it's been going really well. Thank you very much. because obviously I haven't been putting any news out about anything at the moment. I've been sworn to secrecy about everything and nothing. Mark C, hiya hey, mate. Um, just on Leeds and Liverpool on your bike. Well done mate, well done. Tim and Mark on the Crank It Crew. So if you're on the Crank It Crew, you're a Patreon member basically. So you sign up to my Patreon, you get all the behind the scenes stuff. You get all the gossip, you get too much gossip. In fact, I shouldn't really share so much. You don't get, you know, you don't get any rude pictures, so that's good. All right, hitting some weed again in the canal. It does get really shallow on this bit, I remember. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Secret is safe. Brilliant. Because whatever we say now... Hi, right, Lynn. Um, yeah, whatever we say now is going to be watched back by potentially thousands of people. And what they will probably see is the first part of it, just skipping through all the, uh, the dips in the signal. Just comes to this bit. So yeah, if you've just tuned in, <laughs> we've been making our way slowly away from a reservoir called the Chasewater Reservoir in Staffordshire, near Cannock. And uh, yeah, I've just been joined by John Slate Slight. And he said he's just made some sultana and apricot flapjacks. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Can, actually, yeah, what I need, okay, is your most banal news of the day. So I want you to... <laughs> the most abnormal news, and I will read it out in an announcer's voice. In my TV voice, I'll read it out. So whatever you've done today, nothing exciting, please and I will read it out. Um, I may have to actually go on the, the weed hatch in a second as well. 
but I'm going to plod on very slowly. to say about this that I haven't already said today already something else um, Chris Graver welcome you're supervising okay all right here we go right we're ready <laughs> Chris Graver supervising at Ellesmere Port and Anderton it's at the Anderton lift well that is quite exciting that to, to a lot of people that is incredibly exciting especially if you're a canal geek if you're a narrowboat nerd, like myself. That is the thing. I, I'm, I started filming all this because, I'm started doing these live videos because it can get a little bit boring for me, a little bit samey, retreading my steps. I'm coming back down a canal that I've already been up. It's a dead end that way. But to other people, They'd, they'd kill to do this, you know. This would be an amazing experience, and be, yeah, be, be party times. But let's not take anything away from it. This is a, a lovely cruise on one of England's most remote canals. In fact, it's so remote, I've not seen a water tap in three days. Actually, I saw one yesterday. Filled up. But where I'm going. And I will take you with me. I'll do some more live streams if I can. Is a stretch that takes me from here for about nine miles and through about nine locks. And it's a part of the BCN that we're going to do together. You'll keep me company for, for some of it. If that's all right with you, you can tune in, tune out, no pressure. Just so I don't just talk to myself, really. So that is quite exciting. Tim, Tim Hill was supposed to be working today, but he spent most of the day getting excited about his 57 foot narrowboat, which is being built and is launching in spring. See, that sounds, that is actually genuinely exciting for most people that watch this channel. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. When we get to that bridge, and then you can see there's a bridge there, I'm going to stop the boat, which is fine because there are no other boats around, and I'm going to go down the weed hatch and see what's down there. It might not be anything, but I am going really slowly, which is a good sign that there is stuff wrapped around. And just look in the water, it looks quite shallow and full of weed and plastic bags. changing there on the right. It's still summer weather but definitely heading on into autumn. Got lots of people enjoying being outside. Cycling past. Much faster than I'm going. 
Right, at this point in time, I've got to give a massive shout out to the one and only Stuart Woodman. Now, you might know Stu because he has filmed Canal Boat Diaries with me. He is the producer that you see at the end credit, on the end credits. And it was his birthday today. So happy birthday, Stu. I hope you had a, had a, had a good one. <laughs> what, what did you get up to? <laughs> Have you got any exciting news that I can say in a, an announcer's voice? Jo John, very, very droll. Very funny. <laughs> you thought I said, looking down my wee hatch. No, I said weed hatch. And I've said that a lot this week because I've spent, I'm trying to work it out, I've spent about three or four hours down the weed hatch in total. Gary B says his wife Leanne is getting excited. She's off bell ringing tonight. Well, he's staying in and cranking it with us. Nice one, Gary. Count on you. Leanne will be joining my dad. Actually, my dad rings his bells on a Thursday night. Imagine that. He's a bell ringer. It's a commendable pastime for most of my audience are bell ringers, I think. <laughs> Shout out to bell ringers. <laughs> oh, that's nice to hear. Stu, Stuart Woodman, happy birthday once more. Spent the day with some good pals, so that's, that's nice. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> oh dear. Lol. Almost at the bridge, and when I do get there very, very slowly, I'm going to turn the engine off and show you what happens when you have something wrapped around your propeller, how to get it off, and why you shouldn't worry about it. Unless you've done it several hundred times in one week, which is what I've done. <laughs> yeah, you can see some of the lorries and the vans and the cars going over that bridge now. Everyone's getting home for their tea. 6.30 p.m. here in the UK, if you're watching abroad, overseas. It's a Friday night, and Friday night, 6.30, there's going to be a queue down the chippy, isn't there? Fish and chips on a Friday night. That, that was always our tradition when I was growing up. But also there's sometimes a reason why we couldn't do it, because mum and dad were like, it's going to be too busy, everyone's getting some chips. <laughs> well, Another question we're going to ask each other, isn't it? What's your favourite order when you go to the chippy? What do you What do you order? What's your What's your top pick? When I was a lad, it would have been Savoy and chips, child's portion. But now, it's usually just cod and chips with mushy peas. Traditional. <laughs> I've just lost a couple of people on the live stream with that question. Oh well. This is definitely the slowest speed we've ever travelled at. Right, almost there. And then I'm going to stop. I'm going to pull in, stop, have a wee and then I'm going to have my weed hatch, I mean my weed hatch. And then wash my hands, yeah, probably. No point in washing your hands until we've put them in the canal water, I suppose. Cod row and chips with curry sauce, says John Townsend. That's his order at the chippy. <laughs> nice, says Mark. <laughs> I love it. Is 
such a niche live stream. I'm loving this. Hopefully, actually, I'm not going to stop in this bridge because we, we could lose signal, so I better keep going. I just thought it would be an easy place to keep the boat um, still. Yeah, let's get through, let's get through this. Because it's more of a tunnel than a bridge. Well, not quite a tunnel. that low the bridge so I'm standing up and that doesn't touch my head at all and you guys are all right right there okay bear with me just gonna go to the loo. And then I'll be back to go down the wee hatch. Same time. This canal is so quiet that I can't just leave my boat in the middle of the canal and go to the toilet. Pretty cool. Right, I'm back. I'm just gonna turn the camera around. How am I gonna do this? Uh, turn the camera around. Show you what I'm doing with. So that is my weed hatch. And I'm just going to place the microphone down over here. Can't quite see it in the um, I've got my handy half a, um, is it a shear? <laughs> and that should help if I need to sort anything. But I'm hoping it's just going to be a quick removals job. that plastic bags and the lot so I'm just gonna see if I can reach take the, the, the gold colored watch off just get that off What's that? plastic and next we have <laughs> quite a lot of weed Blanket weed, it's just normal sort of lilies and 
canal weed. I don't know the types. And then we've got more plastic bags. And it's wedged in there a little bit. But this is not going to take too much to get off. Should really be wearing gloves if you're if you're a little bit frightened to put in your hands in. Because I have found fishing wire down here before. Fishing line, sorry. In fact, yeah, I found there's some there now. You can just feel it because it's a bit like um, what's it? It's just different texture, isn't it? It's it's. Uh, just plastic line. I just hope it there's no hook attached to it. There never normally is, but hmm. all right, so this is the fishing line. Out. You probably can't see it, but it's there. Yeah, it's like a strand of hair. You probably can't even see it. But yeah, there's all sorts you can get down on your on your propeller mattresses and tires and definitely ropes. I've had that happen to me. That's why they say never let your rope drop in the water. Right, got some more weed there. I'll show you the pile that I'm making in a minute. That's it, that's clear. It's clear now. I always check my hands afterwards just to make sure there's no... Uh, sometimes you get um, some little leeches on you. I've not had that too many times. <laughs> anyway, here. That. Well, I'll show you after I put this back with one hand. been doing this a lot and we want to make sure that it's going to go in without splashing everywhere as well. the corners to make sure there's no gap. There's a seal you can see there that keeps the water from coming in. And there we go. Just finger tight this needs to be. I don't need to get a wrench on it. That's it. That's all I need to do. That's good enough. Right then. That is quite an impressive amount of stuff. I've not seen a lot, I've not seen much worse than that. That's quite a haul. No wonder we're going slowly. Now I can't really throw that back in, I can throw the weeds back in, but I'm gonna have to just find a bin. So I like to put it on my um, solar panels. Here we go. So we're still drifting in the middle of the canal, so I need to turn the engine on now and get cranking again. Here we go. And if you can look after my boat whilst I'm uh, washing my hands, that'd be great.
probably be um, that will probably not be the last time I go down that weed hatch. Welcome, Rachel. Good evening to you. Also, I am quite tired. How are you? <clears throat> oh. Laura, that's a good question. She says, have the, I think you're trying to say, um, are there places to recycle? Um, not on this bit. Definitely not. I stopped at a facilities point yesterday and that was not great. Yes, Rachel, welcome to Relax. I think everyone's had a busy, hot day today. Hopefully, if you're watching this, I'm helping you off to sleep, probably. Because <laughs> this is a really rela relaxed journey, not going very fast at all. on their e-bikes. Obviously not allowed to do that, it's an offence, but there's no consequences for them, is there? They just do it. Looks like pretty good fun. <laughs> Here we go, just about to go through a narrow bit, so I've got to line myself up here can get a bit difficult, especially if you're live streaming, pretending to be professional and also very tired. <laughs> and I am trying to stop this camera from being all wobbly, but it's not wanting to do it. There we go, let's try this. There's a lot of rubbish in that little section we've just been through. I think we've avoided the worst of it. Just trying to stop the camera from wobbling. Bear with me. Lovely relaxing evening on the canal. This one is called the Whirly and Essington, aka the Curly Whirly, because it has so many um, different turns in it, and also Curly rhymes with Whirly, so <laughs> it's an easy nickname to conjure up.
the sound of that noisy road behind us. Should get quite a nice sunset tonight. Let me know if you've got any questions at all, I'll try and answer them. What's for tea? Yeah, I am getting hungry. I really do feel like fish and chips. I haven't got any burgers or any sausages, but I also feel like having a little barbecue at the side of the canal as well. So many possibilities. But I'll probably be too tired to do any of that and just end up having a peanut butter and jam sandwich. Supper, Robbie. Yep. Probably. When I first started boating, I thought, oh, I bet there's loads of mosquitoes everywhere, and it's surprising how few I found. I, I just, I just would have thought there'd be loads more, because some of these canals are quite stagnant, and there is a bit of a flow on this one. But, you know, they're full of rubbish, full of weed. You just would have thought, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Midge and Mosquito Central. Ooh. So I'm just fixing my wallet chain down here. You shouldn't really wear a chain when you're on a boat, but we're not going for any locks today, so I thought I could get away with it. One, one, of the, one part of it's just come undone. Let's just give you the nice view. Here we are. There'll be people watching this, uh, and they'll be like, what, what's he doing? He doesn't, know, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to film these things. He's terrible. Well, I'm doing what I can after a long, long, long day. <laughs> I just wanted to do something for you, and, and so you could have me, and uh, give me com company, rather. That's what I was hoping for. Because it's a lonely life, you know? Pretty awesome life, but at the same time, it can be quite lonely. It's a good job I do like being on my own. A lot of the time, but there are people I do want to spend time with. Obviously. You know who they are. Here we go. Taking that corner like an absolute pro. Whilst also fixing a wallet chain. <laughs> Some very serious looking people about on their bikes, zipping by. In a sec, we should get a really nice view. It opens up a little bit. So we're still on the Anglesey branch of the Worley and Essington Canal. Uh, Anglesey Basin being the place I started out at. We've been going for over an hour, not really travelled that far. Not even done a mile, I don't think.
but it's like a lot of kids ask me, oh, how fast does that thing go? And I'm just like, well, that you, <laughs> this is the wrong motorsport for you, lad. It's normally a boy asking how fast it goes. The wrong kind of vehicle for speed. Doing about two miles an hour now. south at the moment. Uh, where are we headed? East. Southeast. Oh, sorry, Gary. Yeah, dodgy, dodgy signal. Um, yeah, so sorry about all that. Signal is really bad. But I just had to do it. I had to do this live stream, so I was missing you all. And I thought you'd enjoy seeing what the Birmingham Canal navigation is like. So thank you to the 20 people who have kept me company for the past hour. Maybe it hasn't been the same people. But yeah, this is a niche stream. Loving it. And if you've stumbled across this, you think, you know, what's going on here? Well, it's just a random live stream of a bloke on his boat trying to find a mooring for the night. The sun is behind me and it's nowhere to be seen. It's behind the, oh, behind the trees. But it's still very warm. About must be about 20, 22 degrees. Which, which is warm for the UK, 22 degrees Celsius. Thank you, John Townsend. Cheers, mate. Uh, Rachel, do you often get woken up by the swans tapping on your windows for food? No, I don't because I'm really tight and I don't feed them in the first place. No, it's, it, I do get swans and ducks pecking all along the boat when I'm mooring up for long, longer periods. And it's normally because the, there's weed that's grown on the outside of the boat. Right now, there ain't any weed at all on, on the outside of my boat because I've just been cruising so much. Or boating, I, I'm further turned boat, turn boating to cruising, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> going underneath Anglesey Bridge. Just, I'm going to slow right down for this. Cause I might even find a good mooring here. This is a junction. If my memory serves me correctly, we're about to approach a junction with the Litchfield and Hatherton Canal. So I do need to stop here for a little bit. There's the signpost. I'm going to actually turn off, I'm going to stick my nose in and see what happens. I 
actually what's happened is I have just gone through all that weed. Okay. Mark says, any pubs about? There could be, Mark, but I'm not going any. I'm not um, going to any pubs at the moment. It's not as fun as it used to be. <laughs> I'm not drinking for a start. I'm not drinking alcohol anyway, so... Yeah, what do you do in a pub when you're not drinking alcohol? It's difficult. I still love them, but... They contain... Normally on a Friday night, they contain a lot of drunk people. I'm not really a fan of drunk people at the moment. Anyway... Let's get that out of the way. Um, we're about to turn off this canal onto a new one. A one that hasn't been finished yet. In fact, I don't know how far we're going to get down this one. But yeah, a couple of toots. There's <laughs> <laughs> always one for right, two for left. And uh, yeah. Going under. This is Ogley Junction. Not ugly at all. No, ugly. Ugly junction. And this is a bridge that will take me onto the Litchfield and Hatherton Canal, of which I am a patron. That's right, guys. Robbie J. Cumming is a patron of this actual canal that hasn't been finished yet. And I better slow him down a little bit because it could crash or something. It's quite overgrown. Ooh, let's try it. Yes, John Townsend. Alcoholic free Guinness. Guinness Zero. I do love that one. Oh dear. Yeah, there's a gigantic log across the entrance here. You can't, I don't know if you can see it, but all the way across there is a barrier, meaning that I cannot get in there. That's a shame. I, mean, I could try. I don't want to force my way. I, mean, I could try. But sometimes you get like spring loaded ones. Maybe I'll try it another time. I'm going to moor up. Where am I going to moor up? Oh, I don't know. It's getting real now on this uh, live stream. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to have a little look at the front of the boat just to see how cursed it actually is. Let's have a look. <laughs> I'll report back what I see. Oh yeah, it's definitely barricaded off. I will not be going in there tonight, I don't think. Mind you, That's worth a go. That's worth a go. I think it's just tied across and it'll spring back. Let's have a little go. We'll see if we can poke our nose in at least. If we're getting too much resistance, we'll back off immediately. <laughs> so I don't want to break these people, break into a canal that I'm a patron of. <laughs> That'll be hilarious. Do you know who I am? <laughs> that would be a proper do, do you know who I am moment. No, it's tied on at both sides. Oh well. Maybe next time. So I've done reversing away from a reservoir, and now I'm reversing away from a, a canal that used to go all the way there, it, just, it stops just there, but they're rebuilding various sections of it. Hopefully it complete, be completed one day. There's a lot of people involved in it. 
Might as well not be joining them tonight. It's how chaotic my life is. <laughs> I am legitimately a patron of that canal that I just tried to get on. But I'm just not organised enough to arrange for a mooring. And when I decided to do this live stream, it was last minute. I didn't even publicise it really. But. I, I, I really do believe that um, you know, doing what you love doing, it can get lost when you have to spend half the time promoting it. Spent the early part of this year trying to promote my new CD called Tunes 1 and 2. It's out now in shops, uh, available from h &B, Amazon, a lot of uh, retailers, uh, record shops, and online via KWS Blank Canvas Music. So yeah, I've done a lot of that this year and uh, <sighs> it's exhausting. <laughs> So I just, I fancy doing something a bit spontaneous tonight, and this is it. So if you're one of the 21 people watching right now, how lucky are you, eh? Right, not that lucky because you've got to look at my face. Let's turn it round. There we go. And I'm about to crash a little bit. That's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> oh, God. I had to look at my face for too long. Yeah, that's fine. Right, onwards. I'm just getting near the sign. We're close to it, I don't know if we can't, so I'm not going to try and. Well, here we are, that sign up there. Huddersfield Junction being restored by Litchfield and Hatherton Canals Restoration Trust. And the being part of that sign is sort of tacked on, so hopefully one day they'll be able to just chip that off and it'll just say restored by. I'm sure it'll be a very proud moment. Can you imagine? spending decades, years and years, millions of pounds trying to get something like that off the ground. And all the paperwork that's involved, wow. Right, let's crank it. I'm not about to moor up here. Could do, you get a little bit of shade, but there's not much, there's not much to um, drive a mooring pin into. How much space? It's also very well worn by electric bikes and scooters. <laughs> you don't really get boats up here, you just get a lot of, you know, people cycling. Mainly what this canal seems to be used for. And yogging as well. A little bit of yogging. I'm getting really hungry now, I might have a little snack. No, I'll just, I'll press on, it's fine. There's no point in... That would be rude if I had something to eat. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat when I'm dead. Um, I'll eat when I'm moored up. What's your perfect Friday night, evening, Friday evening? Mine is, um, yeah, uh, mooring up, uh, having a lovely long bath, um, which I can't really do because I've only got a shower. And relaxing in front of the box, watching 
uh, a program. It's not like Blackadder. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. Uh, tonight I will probably be relaxing by playing No Man's Sky. It's a space exploration game, which is awesome. It's computer generated and I won't go on about it anymore. Not computer, uh, procedurally generated, but that's, come on. I'm supposed to be a canal geek, not a computer geek. Nerds! Okay, here we go. <laughs> I, am, I am a secret massive nerd. I just make it look cool. You know? Hide behind being extremely cool. Oh, that's incredible. The fact that Rachel and um, Mark and uh, even John, I think, John, it's called No Man's Sky, the computer game that I'm playing. And it, it's, it's, I think they brought it out in 2016 and been in, improving on it ever since. But I've only recently just been able to download it from my Mac. So I don't, I don't have a PC or anything. I consider getting a Nintendo Switch, I thought it would be quite a good way of playing it, but... Yeah. Oh. Oh. You know when um, someone you know yawns, can't help yawning as well, can you? <laughs> Losing a bit of light now. You can see it's getting a little bit darker. We're heading back towards uh, a actually a new junction. I think we've actually we might have another quarter of a mile at least. But it's quite a nice countryside, I'll show you farmland but yeah I need to find a mooring spot but there's quite a lot of reeds in the way here and I really do want to wake up um, to not being baked by the sun although I've been getting up really early anyway so it's not like I'm going to wake up in the middle of the day Tomorrow is my day off, I cannot wait. I'll probably still be working. <laughs> this is a beautiful canal though, I think. And do you know what I can smell? I can smell chips. And I can smell curry. It smells good. It's making me very hungry. <laughs> There's a lot of gardens that back onto this canal. Must be really nice to have somewhere you could potentially moor a little boat. Hello, doggy. <laughs> Is that, look, can, you, can you see me? Can you see me? I'm here. I'm here. Yes, we can see you. <laughs> It's also saying, get lost, get away from my house. I don't understand what this thing is chugging along. It looks weird. <laughs> oh, bless Mark C's other half, who's cooking him dinner right now. Massive shout out to all the long suffering uh, partners of my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> I do meet you occasionally. When you're out walking with your partner and you've got no idea. They're like, oh, Robbie, I love the YouTube channel. Brilliant, blah, blah, I can have my diaries. And I can just see this person standing next to them. <laughs> and they're not impressed. They're just like, what is going on?
Right, I'm going to go and get a drink. So I'm thirsty. Uh, it might even be a fizzy drink. See what I can do here. See if I can time it right. Boat's drifting. Okay. Go. You're in charge. A lot of pressure looking after the naughty lass. Britain's most well-known narrowboat. <laughs> Don't know how that happened. Oh, we've just gone through loads of weed. Was it worth it? Was it worth me getting a getting a, a drink? Yes, because it's San Pellegrino. Favourite sparkling drink. Well, I'm not quite a fan of this one. This one is just basically mineral water, no calories or anything, so yeah. Not, not that jazzed about it. again. We're going to find this time, eh? I wonder what we're going to find here. If you've just woken up, this is Robbie in the weed hatch. <laughs> we haven't stopped yet. There's a nice, there's a healthy wadge of weed down there. Oh, I have to get my nails in. Dig into it a little bit. Oh, come on. What have we got here? We have got, yeah, just bog standard weed. Oh, and some plastic as well. But it's green coloured, so. That's very confusing. That's about it. Lovely. At least it wasn't that stuff. Wow, according to Rachel, her dad didn't even have a weed hatch on, on their boat. Had to jump in the water, that's amazing. <laughs> I would hate to have to do that. I mean, I have been in a couple of times this year already. Not fallen in, just jumped in. So I do like it. It's my hobby. All right. Oof. Back to it. Snoring sorters because it is getting dark. I'm just going to 
give it a quick reverse thrust so I can get rid of any weeds that I've picked up just now. <laughs> so I drifted right into it. So on these canals, obviously it's safer to pull in, isn't it? And tie up and all that sort of stuff before you go down your weed hatch. But for me, it's happened so many times, I'm used to it, but for me, uh, I, I think it's best to be in the middle because that's, it's the deepest part and there's usually less weed that you snag on. Otherwise, you're down the weed hatch, clear the prop, and then straight away you're into weed again. Which you've got to avoid for your own sanity. San Pellegrino. That boat is called the Rugrats. <laughs> Cartoon when I was growing up. I didn't watch it though. Actually, that would be quite a good morning. Under that tree. Oh, I've gone too far. Never mind. I can't go into the next one. I want to show this red, red brick building that was quite cool. Well, it looks alright. Helen, the only problem for me mooring is probably the shallowness. So the depth, sorry, the depth of the canal. It's too shallow, I just can't get in that far. It's also quite overgrown, so I'm going to have to get the shears out, I imagine. But also, I do want to be under a tree or something that's going to give me shade. tree coming up, I wonder if that will be a good idea, some more there. Just going past this, what well, looks like a converted warehouse. So it looks like it was, it, you know, it was built with the canal. But that's a lot of new brickwork, so I think they demolished it, left the foundations and then built a new one. Right, let's attempt this tree. See if we can moor up next to this one. Can't quite see, but over to our right, the sun's going down. I've been training people to um, uh, use an arrowboat and 
tie knots and moor up and all that. It's really useful for me because it sort of teaches me again what I should be doing. So the engine's not running, but I mean the propeller's not running. Just drifting about, getting a feel for the shape of the canal and how, how um, if there is any wind, where it's going to push me. Yeah, we're going to moor next to a, a barking dog, but that's alright. I'm just going to see if I can actually pull in here. It might be too shallow. Too shallow. Right, I'm going to push off. You can see how we stopped. <laughs> and also, that dog is just going to be barking the whole time. Don't know if you can hear. <laughs> it's a shame, but I can see some more. Tree coverage. If not, I'll just have to moor anywhere I can find. Ooh. One thing I have found on the Birmingham Canal navigation is there's not there's not aren't many too many places to moor up. It's it's not welcoming. I gotta say. I'm due to fill up again, Gary, and, and diesel, I think. But again, there's nowhere to fill up, so... Yeah. Once I return to the main branches of the canal, I can, I can do all that sort of thing. The last time I was by a diesel cellar, which is too early in the morning when I started we weren't ready. Anyway. Right, come on. Let's get past these darkened dogs. It's annoying, isn't it, that sound? I love dogs, but... This one is not that happy. I can see you. Maybe he just wanted recognition. What you got on the video? Good question, John. Yeah, there is um, a what's it called? Canal and River Rescue. Um, but I, I, I had them before, but I've never, never really used them. I just call my mate Scott out. He lives in Yorkshire, but I just call him out. <laughs> Just had my chips. I love chips. But I can't eat them because they make me stab. <laughs> no. Yeah, 
they were too shallow that morning again, so I've just gone straight past. It's a shame, because that would have been a good one. But at least it's a cool part of the day to move your boat. And again, sun's going down over those houses there. So it will be quite dark soon. Good question, Al. A lot from Life of Al. Is that a channel? <laughs> um, yeah, it was about 29, 30 degrees on board today. But if you have it in the shade, you can get away with probably five degrees less. You know, it, it really does help. There's mooring here on the right, but that's private. You probably already know this, but on the left, that's all the towpath. That's where I can moor them, anywhere here, if, if it was deep enough. And on, usually on the off side, it's all private land. That's actually a mooring for a school. There's a primary school there. And how cool would that be to go to a school? Look at that school next to the canal. How awesome does that look? I would have loved that as a kid. And I'm looking behind me and I can see they've got lots of uh, canoes or kayaks or whatever lined up. Hey, there's some armco as we call it, the sort of ba the barrier here that you normally get, would get at the side of roads or whatever. The pilings that are driven into the canal, they've got a, a thing that goes across. Really good for tying on to. But I, I haven't seen it at all on the whole network. <laughs> it really is that um, inhospitable to boaters. Well worth seeing though, you've got, a, if I was recommending this network, just do it, just do it in winter, <laughs> when there's not so much weed around. Probably most assistant though, isn't it? Do it in the off season, in the less busier months. That's always my advice. We're coming to the end of the summer now anyway. Well, it is, isn't it? It's September. So, things start to calm down. But at the moment, today, it has been feel like a little bit of a mad rush with everyone scrambling around trying to get out and enjoy the sun while it lasts. I think we've got one more day of it, then it starts to get a little bit thundery and get some showers and it cools right down again. why I want to find a shady looking mooring. 
And look at all these trees lined up here. Surely this spot would be great. I reckon. Yeah, it looks quite dark actually. So that'll be good. Yeah, if it's too hot and the sun is shining on my bow, I can just sit in the shade. Perfect. Right, so I'm going to cut the revs and just drift for a little bit. a floating football in the water rather than a uh, boy warning you if not get too close. Or it could be a grapefruit, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so John's made a point there about fishing and fish, fishing people. I was expecting loads to turn up tomorrow at that spot I was moored by the reservoir, so I thought, yeah, let's get out of the way. That looks like a good spot made for me. But can I actually get in there? Is it going to be too shallow? Let's test it out with the back end. So if we can get that anywhere near. It's always the, the, the stern that sits low in the water. I think we could be in luck here, let's have a look. I know the boat's gone all, all over the place. I think this could be all right. Let's just get you off the boat first. So you can see what's going on. It's a bit shallow, but I think it'll be all right. Got the shade that I need. Plank in the water, I'm just going to get it out first. I was actually banging against the boat all night, probably. Some cyclists coming. Is quite shallow, so that's why I think the back end's not coming in. But the front end, 
don't know if you can see, but the front end's alright. <sighs> so we'll do that one first. hear the sounds of a ice cream van somewhere. <laughs> the shoon of Yankee Doodle came to town. A bit strange. My favourite one is when they play the match of the day theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Turn the engine off. Peace and quiet. Don't need it anymore. Well done, Del. You've got us here. We made it. I'm just going to find my hammer and my mooring pins. My lump hammer is somewhere. I do love dogs. <laughs> they can't they can't come down after a while. Okay, sometimes nearer the back, nearer the side can be quite good. No, straight away into some brick. Oh man. That means that you gotta keep going. Oh, come on. There must be somewhere I can drive it through. Straight away, it's just going right in there. That's all bricks. It's just going straight into rock. Um, right. I can't move there then. Oh man.
this stream ends abruptly, it means my batteries have run out or I've dropped it in the canal. Yeah. It's not one thing, it's the other, isn't it? But this, this is, oh, this perfectly spells out what it's like to have an outer boat and try and, to try and cruise these sort of systems, these waterways. It doesn't always go the way you think it's gonna go. Robbie make it to his mooring. Tune in next time to find out. I'm joking. I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave this running until I actually stop. <laughs> I'm mean, attempting to try again here, but I know what's going to happen. It's all the same material. I'm seeing brick all the way along here, and a, and a really sturdy path, uh, towpath, which is just got hardcore underneath and it's what it feels like just going straight into stone. We'll get there. I've got a big work light that I can use to light the way. I need that. Right, where can I stick the boat? Not there, because that's still the same material. Still, still brick. And there's... Mm, I could tie onto that fence I'm just passing. But there's nowhere to tie the front of the boat. Shopping trolley, so yeah, avoid that one. We're going under Anchor Bridge. Is that what I'm going to have to use? My anchor <laughs> to moor up. Obviously, West Midlands is famous for producing anchors and chains. There's that ice cream van, Mr. Whippy, just gone past. <laughs> Excuse me, lads. Lads, what's this town called? It's where we are now? Brown Hills. Brown Hills, right. So we're in Brown Hills now. Um, which is where I started off this morning, actually. <laughs> so at least I know where I can moor in Brown Hills. It's actually quite a nice place. It can get a bit dodgy like all built up areas, but yeah, it seems alright. People are really friendly anyway. There's quite a few canal boat diaries bands around here. Got 
spotted in the Tesco's about three times. <laughs> I'm only trying to buy my San Pellegrino, guys. Late night canal boating, sponsored by San Pellegrino. Still seeing the same uh, material bricks lining the canal. I need to see something different. I need to see something I can tie onto to, um, or drive a stake into, like a vampire. Not about that. Uh, some soft earth, but it's all very hard at the moment, especially the towpath. Oh, dear me. Why do I do this to myself, eh? You can see how coated the canal is in weed. It's just surface weed, luckily, so it's not clogging up the propeller, going at a good rate. It's not tick over speed. The sky looks quite dramatic. Can't hear you, sorry. Someone just shouting at me over the fence. Nothing bad. Right, I've got a dilemma here. I think I know what I'm going to do. So there's a junction right here. I need to go left. But left is an unknown quantity. I don't know what's down there. So because it's late, I'm going to go right, go a little bit further, but more up somewhere where there's lights, and I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's by a massive Tesco's. Gotta get through this little gap, this narrow bit here, which likely would have had a bridge going across, or some kind of maybe like a toll system to collect tolls. The boats coming off this canal and turning on that one, or carrying on this way. This is all the Worley Nessington. Each way you can go from here. Like we slowed right down, which means there might be something around the propeller. Not cool. Let me see if I can go, get a little bit further. Sometimes when the canal narrows, you've got less space for the, the propeller to turn, so it makes it really difficult. Bear with me, I'm going to do a quick pit stop.
before we have crashed. <laughs> I'm supposed to be steering this boat in the right direction. No. It's fine, it's all fine. We're at Cat's Hill Junction, if you want to follow on the map. And the sign that I'm just turning away from says Rushall, Rushall Junction. Eight miles, nine locks, that's where I want to go next. And Wolverhampton, 15 and a half miles. But I've already been to Wolverhampton this year, so I'm not going back there. Not just yet. Right, let's crank it. We know where we're going on this one. Hello Gary, yeah there's not many other boats going this way. I don't know why that is, so it's just it is a little bit out of the way. But we're in the middle of the country, I mean I don't know, it's quite sad for local people because so many of them have said to me, it's like, oh we don't we've uh, ne never seen a boat here before, you know. Where I started off today. Never seen a boat here before. Really sad. These canals, they need more boats on them. But sadly, people won't come out this way because they're scared. Speed limit's four miles per hour, but we won't, we won't worry about that. We're trying to get somewhere. We're trying to moor up before it gets too dark. Plus, do you know how much traffic comes on this canal? Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> so there's not much chance of the banks getting washed away. See the bridge, the footbridge. So it's not far. Send me off to sleep, it'll be a canal as straight as this. <laughs> Yawn. But yeah, it looks like it does look a bit like a time lapse video. We're going a lot faster. Probably going about <coughs> four miles an hour, of course, yeah. Just four, just four miles an hour. Looking back though, I mean, I don't know if you can see, that's the weight, not the nothing, so it's quite a wide canal. You can paint it on the wide ones, it's alright, it doesn't matter. Here we go, seeing the street lights again. <laughs> oh, here we 
go. Right, so we've got the benches on the right there as well. I don't like more of that mess of benches, but the good thing about this spot here, we've got all the shops. We're right near Brown Hills, um, the, the main strip. All the shops are. And the moorings are clear to see. Just to sit inside this bridge. But also we've got boaters facilities as well, so it's a good spot. Just need more boats here. Well done Chris, watching cruising the car. He's got to get his views up really, haven't you? So well done. <laughs> I haven't seen him for ages. I hope he's alright. He's doing well. Enjoying life. Right, can you see it? More either side here. That's right. So what I will do is I'll moor on the right hand, right hand side until early morning and then tomorrow morning I'll move the boat again. To the other side where the shade is. Yeah, we'll get into some of these trees, that'll do. There we go, it all worked out in the end. The building, just there, is the Botus Facilities place and water sports centre, so there might be a bit of action tomorrow. But, yeah, all good. Unless I wake up tomorrow morning and I'm surrounded by fishermen, this should be a good morning. <laughs> Nothing against fishermen, but they don't like me, so... Well, some of them don't like me. Right, I'm going to jump off with my rope. go moored up in Brown Hills on the Whirly and Essington Canal. I'm quite a straight bit the curly whirly. <gasps> to go a bit further so I can tie up. Yeah, you definitely don't get moorings like this on the BCN. Not a lot of them anyway. I think that's what puts people off. There's not enough moorings. One of the things that puts off people off. The people are dead friendly here. I always find, anyway. Right. Take two and mooring up. <laughs> We're under a little bit of shade. Nothing major. But that should do me for now. I'm going to crack on mooring up properly, say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you again soon. So yeah, night night everyone, night night. <laughs>